Welcome back to another episode of converting two shipping containers into a little tiny home, okay? If you've checked out my other video, first week I went around what the basics, I've done a fair bit since that last video, but if you haven't seen my other video, make sure you shoot over and check that one out before you see this one, that way you'll get to see a bit more of a full picture of what it looked like prior to this. I'm going to be making follow-up videos as well as we go through the process, just so you guys can see how I've done it, and maybe you learned a couple of things, especially if you're looking at converting a shipping container. I know I've been watching a fair bit of YouTube just to try and get some other ideas and that sort of thing as well. There's a really good YouTuber um, called Living Big in a Tiny Home. He's had many great videos on it. Definitely recommend checking out some of his videos. Got a lot of inspiration from his videos. Anyway, guys, with that said, I'll jump in and show you some of the things that I've done over the last couple of weeks, just so you guys can keep up to date with how we're going with the build here. Firstly, we'll have a quick look at the insulation here. So we're just using standard pink bats here for the walls and for the ceiling. Look, if you're in America, I think a lot of those guys use some sort of spray insulation, which would be handy, but here in Australia and New Zealand, you know, a bit limited to that, so we're just I'll be using these pink bats. It's the cheapest option, and we managed to score um, pink bats at about half the price. Some guy um, out of Launceston had, had some left over from a job, so it was perfect. We managed to score some at about half price. I think it was about $450, and we got... Should be about enough to do the whole place, so we'll see how we go. I've still got one more bag left. Well, actually, this is the last bag of the wall stuff, and then I've got about another nine bags for the roof as well, which we'll be putting into the roof panels. So if we have a look here, like I said last week, with these studs, I've been running the studs that way rather than running them vertically, how we do traditional builds here. This is how you do it traditionally, whereas I'm trying to minimise my space coming into the container, so I'll run the boards this way, and then I'm just attaching this 19 mil stud right onto those um, sorry, 19 mil batten right onto the studs there. That way, when you attach the jib, you're only having about 30 mil on both sides of the container coming in. You're not losing, not not losing a lot of space, let's say. Whereas if you'd run the boards the other way, you'd be losing about 70, 80 mil depending on what you're using. So that's how I've done that. Hopefully, all that comes together when I put the jib up there. But we'll soon see. I gave the roof panels a bit of a test run the other day. Just slid one of those into place to make sure it worked out. First time, it didn't go off too well. It was a bit tight. I was a bit tight on my calculations. So I had to run my little plane here. Had to run that little guy just down the edge of both sides of the roof panel just to make sure it slid into place because it was pretty tight first time going in. But second time, shot at it, ran in nice, should be good. Um, and also one other thing, guys, that you can see that I've been doing here is we've got wiring put in, okay? I'm a big fan of DIY, but when it comes to wiring, I don't mind paying someone to help me out with that. Um, luckily, we've got a friend that specializes in installing solar. He's been installing a lot of solar um, panels and things into a lot of the huts here in Tasmania. There's a lot of big walks people do here in Tasmania, um, and he's been installing a lot of the solar there. So we're lucky we've got him on the team helping us out with, the, with this build and this project. So good to get good information, especially around all the solar and the electrical side of things. So he's come in recently and he's roughed in. As you can see, there's a lot of wires and things hanging around. Place. This is all for the down lights. So we're going to cut some holes here in our roof panels and I'll feed that through once I've slid the roof panels into place. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to have to daisy chain a couple here. We're going to have about six running through the middle of this one and then another four or so in, the, in this one here. So we'll have about 10 down lights in total, give or take. Um, and then we've just got switches here for running all those. Also, we have a couple of little lights here. This is where our bed's going to go. So we have a couple of lights here that will come down either side of there. So good for reading at night in bed. Um, and then in the kitchen here, oh sorry, in the bathroom here, we'll have another little downlight from there and then also one above the vanity over that side and then a power point down that far corner there. So that's the electrical look. Like I said, especially when it comes to electrical, I think it's worth getting someone in to do that. Unless you're pretty savvy in that space and you understand electrical, um, then I definitely recommend spending the money and getting someone in to, that knows what they're doing to ruffle that in. Make sure that, especially electrical, it's, you know, it's quite easy to kill yourself, get a good shock, so um, I don't mind paying someone to do that. But just one switch or something, I don't mind having to go, but if, you know, for an entire build like this, it was easy. Come in for a day and he knocked it over, so we're stoked we've got him helping us out with the electrical side of things. As you can see, I've installed the windows as well since last episode. Um, these are the windows here. Oh, look at that. <whistles> Slides like a, look at that, no dramas. So we're quite lucky we got these windows um, all four of them, actually three only installed, and I'm going to be cutting another one out in a minute, which I'll probably video that so you guys can see how I've cut that out. Um, so we got all four for $1,000 off Gumtree, so it's a pretty sharp deal. And that comes in the reveals, so this here, and then also with the nice fly mesh there as well to keep the flies out in the summer months. Um, so that's a pretty good score. We're pretty happy with what we've done there. Another thing to bear in mind when you're putting these windows in is to give yourself a little buffer here so that you can put the jib straight onto there. What I didn't do the first time was I put them flush with that and I only thought about it afterwards, so I had to bring the windows in, which was quite easy. Just 
under the screws and pulled it in 10 mil just to give me enough little buffer there for running the jib so that way you've got it nice sitting flush once the jib's laid okay so that's one little mistake i made there um as you can also see i ran floor throughout as well since the last episode which is great i've just got this yellow tongue flooring stuff here i don't know if you can see that um 19 mil thick it is comes in a sheet quite long 3.6 by 800 from memory um depends where you get it from this stuff's from bunnies you can get it from wider 10 same same i think they've got green tongue rather than the blue tongue super easy to use managed to lay the whole all the floor out pretty much in a day day and a half i think it was there was a little bit of shagging around to get the bridge the gap between both containers here because they weren't quite bang on level so i had to use a jack to jack both containers make sure they're pretty bang on um to so just use a standard little car jack so if you wanted to jack up your container you can use this little car jack and it gets away with it um, and you can just prop it up and put things under place just to make sure she's all level so it sits nice and flush the whole way through so that, that took me a little bit of mucking around to get that sorted but that's good got the floor sort of tidied everything up a bit in here when i got the floor in um and yeah got this door installed the other day um was a bit of shagging around putting this door in. i'm not gonna lie it was pretty hard i've never installed a ranch slotted door before um but this is just your standard bunnings door uh, for bunnings i think from memory it was around 1500 don't quote me on that i have to look back on that one um and they say you know that it comes you know it's predominantly sold as a left hand install but can be installed right hand still but this was a little bit of a tricky part was as they say oh it's left hand you can go right hand whatever but everything's sort of pre-drilled and ready to go to set up as a left hand side and um, it's very hard to sort of cross everything over to the right hand side unless you put them in a few times might be a bit easier but for me first time putting it in it was a bit of mucking around scratching my head looking at the instructions a fair bit but i managed to get over the line in the end but like i said it took about a day probably to um get it all plumbed in and everything looking good in the reveals lined up ready to go gave myself a good little buffer here um of 30 odd mil not quite as much 30 mil on the top i think i only had as you can see there it's it's about 15 or 20 mil on the top and then i had about 30 mil down the side just so i could get it all nice plumbed in nice and level everything before i screwed it off and ended up packing it out here with a piece of timber which i planed down and mucked around just to get that sitting nice and flush with it but i gave myself that little margin of safety there um, just to make sure it's all level and plumb because you don't want the door not sitting level or anything but just sits nice and level there got all the lock all plumbed in nicely there and also got a oh also got a fly screen on the front of that as well so that's good especially in summer here it gets a bit warm not, not this summer so much but generally it gets pretty warm here in summer and down here cut the big door out here this is going to be a big triple stacker door so this one's going to be 2.7 wide by 1.1 1. 1, sorry two meters one two meters 145 high so that's how big that one's going to be triple stacker rather than a double stacker there still waiting on the delivery from bunnings from that one they dropped the ball there on that um, they were a bit late this one was a late a week late coming in and the other one's still on back order now so a bit of mucking around waiting for that but that's just part of the job i guess um, and like i said we're going to finish up and put one more window in here this is going to be the final window that i'm going to be cutting out literally right after i've finished talking to you guys and i've just been cutting out the windows with the old trusty grinder here works a treat look you talk to a few guys and they say you can't use grinders you need oxy and all that sort of thing okay you can use a grinder no dramas you do end up ripping through a lot of these blades I've gone through probably about 50 of these um especially the first few times i was chopping them out pretty quick not quite keeping it level and whoop, i'd spin a blade so i'd have to um go through a fair few of those um, i just bought another six to cut this out hope it should get me through that i'd say um i may even do a bit of a video just on that just so you guys can see how i've been cutting it out i'll say just a couple of little tags on the top here cut it out pretty much entirely rather a couple of little bits just hanging on and i'll just knock the last bit out with a hammer it keeps it nice and solid while i'm um cutting it out so that's how i've been cutting the windows out look there's probably a few different ways you can do it but that's how i've been doing it. it's working for me And there we have a team all cut out ready to go 
All right, guys, there we have it for another week. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did get some value from the video, guys, it'd be much appreciated if you hit that like button. Helps me out a ton. Helps push these videos out a bit further. And if you want to share this video with some of your friends that may be looking at converting a container, by all means, flick it off to them as well. If you've got any questions on anything else I've covered off on today, guys, drop it in the comments below. Or any sort of queries on anything that I'm doing, on how I'm doing it, by all means, drop them in the comments below. And make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're new here. That way you can stay up to date with the latest videos, both on investing and also converting the shipping container. With that said, guys, we'll catch you in the next video. Cheers, guys.